In this module, we'll discuss skull x-rays. This will include the above water, below water, and lateral images. Now before you bring the patient into the room, you want to make sure you do as much prep work as possible. This includes inputting the patient demographics into your digital acquisition system, if that's what you have. You also want to set your techniques appropriate for the first examination that you intend to do. You want to make sure that your camera, your x-ray tube is aligned with your upright bucky. Now it is possible to, to do some of these examinations on a table, but I will always encourage you for diagnostic purposes, as well as for the comfort of the patient and simplicity's sake, that you do any and all skull work, sinus work, or facial bone work at an upright bucky. That being said, you'll want to align your tube centered to the uh, upright bucky with the indicator here. Your crosshairs will be centered uh, horizontally and vertically. If you angle the tube, which you will have to do for a couple of these images, you'll want to make sure that once you angle that tube, raise it or lower it, you'll reorient it back to the center of your upright bucky. You'll also want to load your film into the upright bucky if you haven't already done so. Some of you have fixed systems where it does not include cassettes, and that's fine. You just want to make sure that you are centered and your collimator light is appropriate to the size of the film and the orientation of the film. Okay, so there are eight cranium bones and 14 facial bones in the skull. That notwithstanding, there are dozens of x-ray images that involve the skull and facial bones. But in this module, we are only covering three basic exams because they're comprehensive in nature and you're able to see the anatomy in its full profile with each of these exams. Now, these three exams can be applied both for the skull, facial bones, and also sinus views, depending on what your doctors have, have ordered. Learning these three views that I'm about to show you will give you the confidence to comply with most any and all skull x-ray orders. The Waters view, nicknamed in this module as the above Waters view, is a position that resembles a person holding their head above the water. The patient is directed to the upright chessboard or the table and positioned facing the board with their chin against it. The bottom of their nose is at the very center of the bucky. You can see that here, the bottom of their nose, that laser pointer right there. They're centered with your crosshairs directed right there. With their chin touching, their nose is about an inch off, uh, about an inch and a half away from the board, and they are facing directly toward the board with no rotation. You want to make sure that the head is not rotated. The tube is 40 inches away, and the crosshairs are aimed at the protuberance at the top of the skull. I refer to it as Pluto's notch because many people are familiar with this famous Disney character, but you can see the notch as compared uh, on the dog to the patient. Uh, we can all palpate that bony protuberance at the top of the head. Now remember to mark the image with a lead marker and make sure that it's either right or left on the appropriate side of the patient and keep the marker out of the field of concern. A baseline technique for this would be 12 mass at 76 KVP. Now here's the end product of the above waters view. You can make out both orbits, which should translate into some relatively round sockets. The nasal bone is a thin bone right out in front. It's a commonly fractured bone, so you'll want to be able to visualize it. It's clearly between the orbits, and it's surrounded by the sinus chambers. The sinus chambers are fairly obvious. They surround uh, all of these structures. They are uh, prominent throughout the frontal portion of the face. You can also see the maxilla, which is below the uh, ma maxillary sinuses, but also below that you can make out the jaw or also known as the mandible. Now here uh, is the end product uh, of some images that have been burned out or ha are under uh, penetrated. As far as the over penetrated goes, let's just use one example of uh, the visualization issues that we encounter here. 
you'll see the frontal bones that are found, uh, frontal sinuses that are found up here. Notice in the burned out image as well as the underpenetrated image how difficult it is to uh, identify fluid levels that are obvious in the frontal sinuses. Not only do we need to, in, uh, to see the, this anatomy, we got to identify the nuances of, of the anatomy as well. You see, you can also see the maxillary sinuses here in the uh, overpenetrated portion, but you cannot see the fluid levels and the nuances of the anatomy within the maxillary sinuses themselves. You can just see general overviews that are not diagnostic in uh, any sense. Also, the underpen underpenetrated version of this is very difficult to make out any nuances uh, of fluid levels or air pockets or uh, uh, any type of bony formations. So you want to make sure that you have a good, well-rounded, uh, contrasted image that uh, allows you to make out bony textures, anatomy, fluid levels, air levels. It's got to be very comprehensive and you don't want to subject your doctor to try to read images that are simply uh, unreadable. Also notice the right marker. It indicates the patient's right side. Now this is the below water position. It's also known as the Caldwell, Caldwell method. That's a formal method of it. But I call it the below water position so that you can remember it, frankly. Now the uh, subject here, is uh, he faces the board. He's directly... Um, has his forehead and nose touching the surface. The nose is at the center of the chessboard, as you can see. Your camera must be directed 15 degrees downward toward the feet. And as a result, you'll need to move the patient away from the field so that you can line up your centering line. Remember when I told you, anytime you angle your camera in any direction, any way, you'll have to reorient it back to the center of the upright bucky. Now, you can also notice that we are at a 40-inch distance at an upright bucky with um, a grid that's involved. You'll want to center your, once you've angled your tube, you'll want to center there at the, uh, just above the occipital protuberance, which is that kind of that bump right behind your ears. It's, an, it's a prominence in the uh, furthest portion of the back of your head. You'll also want to make sure that you mark your film left and also... Please note that you don't want the patient to be rotated from one side or the next. That can constitute repeats if they are hyper-rotated or moved to one side or the other. So you're the judge. Make sure you have them facing directly forward. And also make sure that the light of your tube includes all aspects of the skull. You don't want to cut off any portion of the skull in any of these films. A good technique to include for this examination would be 10 mass at 76 kvp. And here is an example of a below waters anatomical evaluation. Somewhat similar to the waters, except you can tell the patient's head is directed uh, further down. You can see the orbits here. Also the nasion and the nasal bones, the the uh, sinuses that are surrounding there, the ethmoids and the frontals, the maxillaries. You can also see the, the, the mouth in a little bit more clear formation. You can make out the jaw, the ramus of the jaw coming up here. You want to make sure that you see all the nuances. I know that you, there's a lot of uh, mysterious anatomy in here that you can see, but you want to have a lot of black and white, but frankly, a lot of gray so that you can make out all the structures. When you tend to feel like there's a structure that's being burned out, these are ma uh, uh, mastoid sinuses, you don't want to burn out any portion of the skull. So you want to completely evaluate the, the image in that regard. Notice there is, is a right marker indicating the patient's right side. Okay, the, so the third and final position is the lateral skull. This is a comprehensive examination that provides significant visibility of all structures in the skull. Have the patient face the board and then angle them about 30 degrees toward their left side. So their whole body is kind of angled uh, against the board. 
then you can have them turn their head. This is a very difficult image to achieve if you're trying to get them to completely face the board and then cock their neck so their head is completely sideways. Think about it, that's a pretty hard position. So you wanna see how this guy's shoulders are kind of angled at about a 45 degree angle. Have them turn at an angled position and then turn their head completely and they'll be much more com uh, compliant and comfortable so then uh, you want to make sure their head is parallel to the board. Don't allow the patient to lean or tilt their head from side to side, but rather they should have their head, their right ear, and their temple gently against the surface with their eyes, their, well, their eye line perpendicular to the, bucky, to the bucky. Your crosshair should point directly above the patient's exposed ear right here. And in, in this case, the patient's left ear. Your height should be at eyebrow level and be sure to check around your field light to make sure that the shadow of the patient's head is all included within that field light. The cassette is marked according to which side the head is against the chest bucky. In this case, the film would be marked right. And your baseline technique would be eight mass at 76 kbp. Here's an evaluation. I love these lateral skull x-rays. They're very comprehensive. It's easy to see a lot of the anatomical structures within. See how clearly you can see all of these sinus regions within the skull. The cella tersica, which is famous, a little saddle that rests right on top of that. Um, very famous. That, that, that part you'd be able to identify quickly. The ears, when they are perfectly superimposed, you can see the ear canals overlapping one another. It looks like two circles right down the middle. You'll know you're rotated appropriately. Sometimes you'll see one circle here and one circle there. You know you're a little bit rotated. But frankly, if you get the patient exactly where you need them, these laterals are not too terribly difficult to achieve. Notice that every portion of the skull is included. Now, the jaw is not so much so necessary to include in the examination. Generally speaking, when we're doing a skull, you wanna make sure that you at least include the maxillary sinuses just above the mouth. And uh, beyond that, you will have a pretty comprehensive study. Honestly, most of the time the jaw will um, be uh, borderline cut off in these examinations because it, it extends so far down below the, the, the main skull. Now, the, uh, remember I told you these, comp these are comprehensive images. This includes all three of the ones we just reviewed. But if you're doing sinuses or facial bones, you simply uh, collimate down. You'll do the exact same positions, but you'll bring your collimator reg regions a little bit closer in. Honestly, as a beginner, what I would do is just kind of cut off a portion of the skull. You don't have to come down so tightly because it can be intimidating but just kind of isolate the regions that you're looking for so the doctor knows he's not supposed to be looking at the whole skull. Now, when you're doing these positions, there are similar centering points for the lateral. You'll be uh, just uh, in front of the ears and at the uh, kind of centered at the top of the ear level. For the uh, above water position, you're centering right there where the nose uh, meets the, the cassette and then, of course, your centering point here is where the, the, where the patient's forehead and the nose are centered right on the bucky. And you know that the ridge of their nose is essentially the centering point. So, again, you can see how each of these images are so comprehensive that you will be able to do these three examinations for virtually every type of order there is. Now, there are specialty exams, uh, but... And as far as your level of study, knowledge of anatomy, typically you have to specialize in the radiology and take a course in this to fully understand how to achieve much more in-depth examinations that cover these, these uh, facial bones and sinuses in detail. So I hope this helps. I know it's going to be comprehensive. Start with this. Set the, these as your protocol in your radiology department, and you won't go wrong. This concludes our examination of uh, skull, sinuses, and facial bone series.